All right. Welcome to another amazing installation of um, being cold and wearing a weird hat in my basement and talking about social studies. We're going to do some reading and answer the questions that are on the worksheet, but then we're going to look at a map imposed on a new map and see exactly where the shell mounds were. So hang with me. I understand this might be a little bit longer today, but the end is going to be fun. And you have all the links in your work document. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read a little bit about the alone. And today's focus is shell mounds. And we're going to see where the largest shell mound was, though there is noted to be 425 shell mounds found in the area when the Spanish arrived. So um, let's look at the questions first. Okay, so almost answers. Oh my God. Here's the questions. So this is what we're gonna look to answer in the reading and I'm gonna go over these specifically. So hang with me, okay? How long were they alone in the Bay Area? Why is this important? What does it mean when they find fossils deeper down in a shell mound? What four changes does Mr. Litt highlight that were found in the shell mounds as the digs compared older to newer levels? We'll answer these straight up, and I'm going to show answers. No doubts here, but hang with me. But relax and listen to the reading. Make a movie in your mind. I'm going to keep it a little on the shorter side, and but I'm also going to show the text so you can follow along. The earliest contingent of Central California Penutians, the ancestors of the Alones and the Miwoks. Remember, there were tribes and sub-tribes and sub-tribes and sub-tribes. There, there were, at any given time, there were 40 groups around the bay on the water. The ancestors of the Alones and the Miwoks settled near San Francisco Bay. From here, they spread north and east to form the various Miwok groups and also south towards Monterey Bay to form the Alone groups. Exactly when the Alones moved into their present territory, no one knows. That is super important. They pretend that they didn't just say that. That is super important. Linguistic and archaeological evidence suggests that they have, may have been settled here 4,500 to 5,000 years ago. That is the answer, okay? The history of these long years of stability is hinted at by the shell mounds of the Bay Area. At the turn of this century, there were some 420 of five of them around the immediate shores of San Francisco Bay, and many hundred more were scattered along the ocean coast throughout Monterey Bay Area. The so-called Emeryville Mound which is the one we're going to be studying on a map, which stood between present day Berkeley and Oakland, measured 275 feet in diameter at its base and was nearly 30 feet deep at its center. Okay, that's a football field. A football field is 300 feet. So it's a football field wide, and it's two to three stories high. Shell mound. Mound of shells and many other things. There were other mounds nearly as huge, and their immense size suggests that they held a long history. As the archaeologists have excavated the various mounds, the story that has merged is one of growth and development of the Bay Area people. Okay, logic here on, on that second question. If you dig further down, what does it mean? It means it's older. They pile more stuff on top. The stuff on top is newer. The stuff deep down is older. This is how archeology span works too. From the earliest years onwards, tools and cooking utensils slowly improved in quality. Get it? As they found stuff deeper down, they found less tech quality tools and stuff. And the higher up they got, they found 
more quality, meaning they developed. Get it? Newer stuff better, older stuff more primitive. Okay. Changes to us would seem minor were enormously important to the ancient inhabitants of the Bay Area. Improvements in the mortal and pestle. So I'm going to ask you for four. I'm going to name them. You just listen at this point. But that's one of them. Mortar and pestle. For example, okay. Improvements in the mortar and pestle, for example, meant that people's teeth were no longer ground to the gums by grit, as in the case of the earliest years. When you can pound grain, your teeth are better. That's what a mortar and pestle is. It's just a rock with a bowl-like rock, and you smash the grains. That's mortar and pestle. One. Okay, two. The invention of the bow and arrow, which eventually replaced the spear, enabled the Bay Area residents to hunt birds and game that had previously been only an occasional part of their diet. Manufactured goods and raw materials found in the shell mounds also reveal that throughout their history, barrier groups had changing, complex trade relationships with other tribelets surrounding the area. Now, that's a cool fact, but I didn't ask you. I didn't, I'm not highlighting that one. I'm highlighting mortar and pestle, bow and arrow, and the next one is the change in position that they buried bodies. So, yes, they buried bodies in the shell mounds. They lived on top of the shell mounds and they buried bodies in the shell mounds. So what is a shell mound? A shell mound, we're gonna have to answer in just a second. Let's let's finish, let's keep going with this. So see, it says here, Bay Area groups had to, okay, right. Finally, at the level that corresponds to 1000 BC and again at 500 AD, there were changes in the ritual positions in which the bodies of the dead were buried. Changes that may have had signified outside religious influences. Now, the next chapter goes into, so I highlighted mortar and pestle, they found. Bow and arrows, they found. The positions and the way they buried bodies changed is. That meant like religious development. And... The fourth thing I'm going to highlight is the whole next paragraph. I'm going to spare you and not read all the academic words. But there was no significant, fast, amazing, big dramatic changes in what they found. The changes that they found were all gradual, 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 gradual. And when archaeologists study other places like Greece or ancient Rome, often there's really sudden changes. And that has to do with disasters, cataclysmic, fast social changes. That is not there with the alone people. And archaeologists said, whoa, that's evidence. Dude, it just underlines that they were stable and peaceful for thousands of years. Let's take a look at the, um, the document now. Hey, I put up some answers. Those are some answers. You can pause the camera and use them. I don't want to read them out. You can pause the camera and read them. But those those are some answers. Help you out. Just being clear. Okay? So this you don't have to write about, but how are the shell mounds formed? Remember, well, here we go. The village. There, there's our drawing of the village. Okay, so where they eat, they would just throw piles of shells. Where is that in this building, in this picture? They would usually eat in a central place. So I'm thinking maybe they would eat in the center. You know, they're doing they're working there. Kids are playing and working there. They're working over there. They usually meet in the center and eat. And then they discard their shells. And after centuries they build up. It even says right here. 
you know, in the, the long description. Um, villagers eat in groups around the various houses. The meals are noisy, full of jokes and good humor. People exchange stories of the day. A lazy woman who ground her acorns badly and a, an a inept fisherman who hasn't caught any fish were teased. The people dip two fingers into their bowls of ac- acorn mush and slurp it up. It's very rich food. Clamshells, mussel shells, and animal bones, you know, birds, everything, were tossed into a pile beyond the circle of houses. Oh, beyond the circle of houses. And after many centuries, these things pile up. It's a testament of how much they they actually piled up. So let's look at that picture again. So I guess maybe they're making a shell mound. So that's a sweat lodge there where they have ceremonies. Looking at the picture here. Beyond the circle of houses, they would toss the shell mounds. Often they would live on top of the shell mounds, I read, also. So I'm not sure where the shell mound would be in this picture. You know? Maybe this is a camp that's close to the water during the summer. But the evidence is clear. They would often live on top of the shell mounds and keep piling on the shell mounds and then bury people. In the shell mounds. Okay. Now, on your document, you have a link to a, to two maps. And the link is going to take you to a place where an old map is interposed over a new map. And there's a button on the top right where you can fade the map in and out. And I'm going to try to show you right now about finding the shell mount and where it is. And you can try this out. It's really fun. So when you go to it, you can see it's an old map imposed upon a new map. You're going to have to zoom in. And the way you do that is, I don't know if you can see, whoops. Well, you can't actually see it from here. Okay. On the left-hand corner, there's a plus and a minus. Do you see that plus and a minus? That's how you zoom in. All right. So I'm going to go to it, and I'm going to attempt it to zoom in. Don't use that word zoom, Mr. Lit. You have to let it kind of resolve its, you know. And then directly, you see where it says O for Oakland? If you keep following that O up, see that O right there in the center? See that O for Oakland right there in the center? If you keep following that O up. There we go. If you keep following that O up, uh, you see the O right there? I'm going to go above the O and you'll see just kind of right here, right at the end of my finger, above the O is a park along the water's edge and that's where the Emeryville shell mound was. And it's on this map. Oh, this map's from 1884. So the Spanish missions are way done. They were done by like 60, 70 years at this point. And it's actually 30 years after the gold rush has started. But still, the shell mound's there. Let's go to it. Okay, here we go. Going back. So I'm going to go to the shell mound. See there in the center. And there we go. Do you see how it says shell mound really small? See that? Hold on. Right there, it says shell mound. See it? By that Oakland trotting park thing? Shell mound. Now watch this. When you peel away the old map onto the new map, whoa, you can see the Shell Mound is right there at Bay Street Mall. Shell Mound, Bay Street Mall. Shell Mound, Bay Street Mall. Shell Mound, 
Bay Street Mall. Whoa. Can you can we have them both? Shell mount. So, right there, oops, where the Shell Mound is, in the Bay Street Mall, is kind of across the street from the Apple Store that's in, on Bay Street. Now, different maps put it a little bit in different locations. Supposedly, it was actually under the where the AMC and the California Pizza Kitchen is. But remember, that thing is the size of a football field, and these maps are not always accurate. So, somewhere around there was the big Shell Mound. Now, what's really cool about this map is you can explore other things. You can see that Adeline Street was a trolley car. Like, you can just impose the old and the new. And again, let's take a look at it. How do you do that? There's a bar. That bar right there, I drag that little brown dot back and forth, and it fades the old map in and out. I put two of them up on your links. Play with them. And see what you can see. All right? It's pretty cool, actually. It's pretty freaking cool. Um, you can learn a lot about the area. Well, first thing we see is not just the shell mound, but how they built up the shore. Look at that. All of the highway and stuff. That's all landfill. They filled that all in. That did not exist in 1885. If we go up on the shore. You see how they planned it into the ocean? Because that's where they're planning... On filling all that in. It's kind of Powell Street. What used to be called Montague Street is now 59th Street. What's interesting is um, if you go over here, see that's, that's at, you know, it's a railroad line. It's totally Stanford and Adeline. It's totally Stanford Street. See that railroad line? And Adeline Street is there. Now, if you go up, I'm trying to find the old Glendew at Santa Fe site. Let's look at the new map. There we go. So right here in the center, yes, awesome. Right there in the center. I don't know if you can see there's a little bit of purple. That's the Santa Fe, Glenview at Santa Fe site. And I always said, we have such a big yard. Well, this map gives you evidence on why. Check it out. I'll show you. We had such a big yard or have such a big yard at the Glenview at Santa Fe site um, because... Hold on. Wait a minute. No, I'm off. That's not it. Okay. Sorry. Add the wrong one. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I was trying to... I got the wrong purple splotch. I'm going to try to find Santa Fe one more time. Okay. Take it out for a second. There we go. Market. 55th. There it is. I got it now. All right. There we go. Okay. That purple splotch, right? Sorry, it's mirrored. That purple splotch right there, that is the Santa Fe at Glenview. It's Santa Fe site. It's still Santa Fe Elementary. I don't know what they can do with the Santa Fe building now. I think they're turning into special ed classes and offices, whatever. That You notice how it took up a full block? I'm going to show you why. It took up a full city block because it was the block when it was planned to be a school. See, look, it took an entire block. They said, oh, that block's just going to be a school and a schoolyard. 
So look at that. Boom. They made it a school and a schoolyard. And it says Emory Secondary School, but that's the Santa Fe campus. And again, you can see it was just a block. So in those days, they gave the whole block to the school. Prescott Elementary is the same. A few of the Oakland schools have an entire block for their school and their schoolyard because they were planned and formed at this stage. And they said, oh, yeah, this is a school. You give, you give them the block because there wasn't a lot of things around. So take your time and check this map out. It's pretty cool. And then see if you can find the shell mound on the other map. Okay, so I'm going to leave the answers up to the um, questions one more time so you can see them. And um, do your work before 10 o'clock. That's our goal. Do your work before 10 o'clock without your parents having to tell you and without getting lost in a Roblox game or whatever. Okay? You guys are amazing. We're learning good stuff.